Today we're going to be talking about how to let go of an ex that you still love. So we're going to be talking or attacking this from a couple of different angles. First, I'd like to talk about the irony of what happens when you end up letting go. But I'd also like to talk about sort of the generic advice that people tend to give and hopefully give you some actionable philosophies that you can take going forward to improve your overall outlook of what's happening in your love life. So let's just jump right in on, in my opinion, the best way to help you let go of an ex that you still love. So first things first, let's talk about the irony of a letting go of an ex. So one of the things that I'm most proud of is the sheer amount of success stories that we've had come through our program. Some of these success stories you can actually watch uh, me interview for free on this YouTube channel if you don't believe me. But bear in mind, I consider a successful situation basically with two criteria. Number one is they come back to me wanting their exes back and they accomplish that goal. But number two, we also consider it to be a successful situation if at some point of the process they shift their mindset from not trying to get an ex back to basically working on finding the person they're meant to be with outside of their ex and finding that actual person. In my opinion, that's a success story because what most people think they want when they watch my YouTube channel is they think they want their ex back, but that's not really what they want. They want a life partner or someone that has the potential to be a life partner, whether that's their ex or not. Maybe they think it's their ex at first, but ultimately that's the end goal that they want with their ex. So in my opinion, those are the two criterias that I would look at. Now, if you interview enough of these success stories and you actually pay attention to what's going on beneath the surface, an interesting trend begins to emerge. Exes almost always come back when you're least expecting it, and usually that happens after you've begun the process of moving on from them. In fact, one of my latest YouTube videos talks about this phenomenon in depth. I talk about why exes come back when you least expect it. And it's ironic, isn't it, that the main key to potentially getting an ex back might be taking steps towards trying to get over them. Now, I'm bringing this up not to try to convince you that you don't need to get your ex back or convince you that you do need to get your ex back. It's just that I know you're being told by your friends and family, you just need to get over the breakup because they're sick of hearing about it. And it can be difficult to deal with that, especially if this is your support system, your own personal sphere of influence, and they're not exactly the most supportive individuals. So my goal with this video is to really help you accomplish two things. Number one is use real methods of quote unquote letting go to make you more attractive to all suitors, not just your ex. And number two, to help you overcome the grief that you are feeling after this heartbreaking breakup. <laughs> okay, so I plan on doing this a little bit more uniquely than you're used to. For example, when I was researching this video, I took a look at what my competition was saying, what they were recommending, and almost all of them recommend the same three pieces of advice. Usually it goes something like, number one, you need to forgive yourself. Number two, accept the breakup. It's already happened. And number three, avoid being alone. Now, it's not necessarily bad advice, but it's generic. Also, ever since we started up our coaching practice five years ago, that generic advice doesn't work as well as you'd think. I want to cut right to the meat of what matters, and it all starts with a philosophical mindset shift. More on that in a second. For now, let's create the foundation. So the one piece of generic advice that I will stick to is the no contact rule. So our official definition of the no contact rule is basically it's this period of time where you're cutting off all conceivable communication with an ex after a breakup. Now the intent of this tactic should not be used to make your ex miss you, but instead should be used to rebuild your own life so that you quote unquote outgrow your ex. Now by doing this, the no contact rule can have that added benefit of making an ex miss you. Now generally speaking, this period of time where you're ignoring your ex will last anywhere between 21 and 45 days. Of course, I find that roughly half the people who purchase our program have a complete misunderstanding of the function of a no contact rule. You are supposed to be doing it for you, not for your ex. We don't care if your ex reaches out to you. We don't care what your ex is up to. All we care about is how you're using your time away from them. So too often, I find that our clients fall victim to one-itis. Now, one-itis is a phenomenon in which our clients put their ex on this pedestal and become too obsessed with them. Now, ultimately, this makes you look kind of like a limited individual 
who has no life to your ex because it seems as if your ex, you have no life outside of thinking about them 24 seven. So I'm obviously using extreme examples here to make my point, but hopefully you kind of understand what I'm trying to go for. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit of the psychology behind why most of our clients have trouble letting go or falling victim to one-itis, one great place to start is by reading some of the articles on our website that I've put together on attachment styles, specifically our literature on anxious attachment styles. So for reference, you usually have an anxious attachment style if you're terrified of being alone. So you compensate it by surrounding yourself with individuals and hyper focusing on those individuals. But you need this constant reassistance or reassurance that you're kind of cool. Now, if that sounds familiar, well, that's probably because you're exhibiting anxious uh, attachment tendencies. Real quick, I want to say that if you're new to this YouTube channel or you're trying to figure out what you should be doing to get your ex back and you're trying to learn if you even have a chance in your specific circumstance, probably the smartest thing for you to do is actually stop by our website www.exboyfriendrecovery.com or take our ex recovery chances quiz that can be found at exboyfriendrecovery.com. Now if you're watching this on YouTube, taking that free quiz is super easy to do. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can fill it out and get an easy answer on what you should be doing going forward and overall what your chances look like in your specific situation. All right, so let's get you back to the video. What I think my hypothesis is that we found, the, the reason we found the no contact rule to be such an effective approach post breakup to taking the first step towards letting go of an ex potentially is that it's a complete departure from what your ex is used to and they begin to take notice of this so your ex is used to the anxious behaviors but that's no longer happening so additionally for the first time from their perspective it looks as if you are focusing on yourself as opposed to them of course it's easier said than done that's why I think what you're focusing on during the no contact rule is really the key philosophical shift to letting them go. And what you need to be doing is finding a purpose greater than your ex. So earlier I took aim at some of the generic articles that gave the same sets of advice on letting go of an ex. Now the problem with generic advice is that me simply sitting here and telling you to accept the breakup or begin the process of moving on, forgive yourself, stuff like that, it leaves you nodding your head being like, yes, 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 but what do I actually do? And one of the only things I've actually ever seen work for our clients is this concept of finding a purpose that means more to them than their ex. In fact, this is why I encourage many of my clients to begin thinking immediately during the no contact rule about their magnum opus. The magnum opus is kind of your life's purpose. It's what potentially gives your life some sort of meaning. It's sort of that thing that if you accomplished it right now in the midst of all the pain you're feeling from the breakup, it would make you not necessarily forget your ex, but diminish your, your ex in your mind. This is where I think it really helps to read into philosophy a bit and figure out what is it that gives your life meaning. Right now, you think it's your ex. Surely, you're a more complicated individual than that though, right? I think that we've come up with kind of an interesting system to help you identify a greater meaning and it fits within the framework that we often teach our clients. So for years, I've gone back and forth on this concept I put together called the Holy Trinity concept. And I went back and forth on it because I felt like it didn't encompass every aspect of life. I used to think that, but recently I'm kind of swaying to the other side and saying that I think it actually kind of does encompass every aspect of your life. So if you don't know what the Holy Trinity is, it's basically looking at the areas of your life that fall into the three categories, health, wealth, and relationships. Now, where I used to get tripped up was that I personally have like a tendency in my free time to watch movies or play video games and be kind of like a teenager again. And it felt like that didn't really fit anywhere on the Trinity, but I actually think it does. Free time and doing those things makes me feel kind of good. It's like a stress outlet in a weird way. It's a form of mental health. So sometimes we need to break from work or family and you need to seek solace in that free time for that peace of mind. So yes, every time that you use your free time, you're actually improving the health category in some way. But 
I'm getting off topic here. The goal of the Trinity is almost always the same. Do your best job of balancing these three areas of your life out. Now, that balance will be unique for every single individual, but we all know what it's like to go through a day when we haven't done the minimum of what we're supposed to do, and it feels like just generally awful. Now, each category of the Trinity is connected as well with this interesting cause and effect relationship. So I'll give you a, a prime example. Let's say you go through a breakup. So that's an immediate negative impact on your relationship. So you decide that you're going to have a cheat day on your diet and, you know, use that to kind of mask some of the pain. So now we're negatively impacting health. Because of the breakup, you don't get any sleep and show up to work tired and get reprimanded for falling asleep on the job. Now, all of a sudden, it's a negative impact on wealth. Of course, the opposite is also true. If you want positive impact on your life and you want to positively improve the relationships area of your trinity, you can use other areas outside of it to kickstart things in a positive direction. I think it was Arnold Schwarzenegger who used to say, when you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you do good. He's literally referencing this component of the Holy Trinity. The synergistic relationship is also the key, we think, to helping you find your magnum opus. So let's understand what the magnum opus intersection is. So here's my theory. I could be wrong about this, so that's why I call it a theory, but I believe each of us has within us at least one magnum opus, and that magnum opus can be found by finding the intersection of the Holy Trinity. Now, what thing can you do that will simultaneously positively impact all areas of the Trinity? What one thing can you do can accomplish all of that thing? Well, that's most likely your magnum opus. Now, what's funny to me is how little people respect the concept. Now, I briefly mentioned this concept in a recent YouTube video, and a few individuals tore it apart. Specifically, one individual said, well, I don't understand this video. I'm meant to spend several hours a day thinking about money. This was, of course, a reference to a point I made in the video about the magnum opus intersect, and the ideal world for most people is to find a purpose in life that they can get paid for. Now, I'll admit that it's sort of a trippy to take that view in a video meant for understanding relationships, but that's the exact point I'm actually trying to make. The sooner you realize that health, wealth, and relationships have a profound impact on one another, the sooner you'll start to see meaningful results in your life. So if you're having trouble letting go of an ex that you are still deeply in love with, here's a quick checklist of the things I'd recommend for you to do. Number one, Begin by cutting off contact with them. Engage in the no contact rule. Have the right mindset when you go into the no contact rule. Number two, start getting your trinity back into alignment. Understand the Holy Trinity concept, health, wealth, relationships, and find a way to begin balancing them. Also, number three, find your magnum opus intersect within the trinity. This will take some work, but what you're looking to do is find the one thing that if you could do would give your life meaning while at the same time positively impacting every other area of your holy trinity. And if that's the case, that's a worthy investment of your time to approach because it meaningfully impacts every area of your trinity and can simultaneously balance it. And then... Number four, finally, make your magnum opus your number one priority. That's what's working in the real world for our clients, and it can too. And it's all based on this idea of, look, if you want to let go of your ex, it's not going to be a simple process. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to happen overnight. But the best thing that you can do is try to find something that you care about just as much or even more than them, and that will help you start down the path to getting over your ex or letting go of your ex.